soundstripe. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Culture Podcast with Kyle and Alexander. My guest today is uh, somebody who has helped mold me into the person I am today. Uh, wouldn't Probably wouldn't have gotten to college without him. Uh, it's Jeff Tobert, local high school legend. Uh, yeah, so just, just to hop into it, obviously, you know, football coach. Um, when I left Grain Valley, I transferred to Van Horn, and he just happened to be there, and that was the perfect coach, uh, perfect coach for me. If I would have gone to Chrisman or Truman, would have been. But uh, but yeah, through you know through his connections and his teaching and the coaching staff around him, uh, you know I got to go to the next level, even if it was just for a little while. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm excited. I've had a lot of experiences, but uh, I've never done anything like this before. So yeah. this is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and hop right into it. Um, what made you get into coaching? Or is there like a person you like that ever told you, you know, you, you might be a coach or something like that? You know, I think every coach um, has had somebody that, that coached them or, or told them that, that, you know, it's something that they should look into doing or something that they might uh, be good at. And uh, uh, my, my seventh grade football coach named Greg Mann uh, was one of the first guys that, that inspired me to want to wanna do this. And uh, I coached a lot of youth sports. I coached my brother in you know, Little League and uh, baseball, wrestling, you name it. And so I kind of developed a love for, for coaching by, by coaching him. Um, and so it just, it sort of developed from there. Um, I, I got into education and frankly, I started off as a, uh, a business major. And um, my, my history teacher told me, you should become a history teacher. And I kind of mm-hmm. said, nah, you must be crazy. I mean, yeah. I, that's, that's not me. Um, but, you know, again, just sort of a, you know, an act of fate. Um, you know, I, I was having a conversation with my dad and he told me, you know, you'll, you'll find the perfect job when you find something that you would do for free. And at first I just thought, yeah, whatever, you know, he's just, he's just trying to beat the old man, you know, trying to, trying to pump me up a little bit. But then I, I came to realize that, that, that coaching was something that I just enjoyed doing and, and I wanted to do it and I realized that I would do it for free. And, uh, at that point, I just began to pursue it, uh, you know, as a college student. So that, yeah. that's how it developed. And okay, so I don't even remember. I I know like once you say it, it'll like click in my head. Uh, but I know where you started JUCO. Where where did you go? Did you start? Didn't you start yeah, JUCO? I went, I went to Garden City Community Gar- College. Okay, Garden City. Yeah, yeah, Jayhawk JUCO Conference, and uh, um, kind of interesting because. Uh, I had, I hadn't watched the uh, uh, the was it Netflix is the last chance you mm-hmm. I you know I started watching the the, the two episodes with uh, the the guy from uh, Coach Brown from uh, from Independence yeah and um, and I only reason I really started watching it was because he was in that conference and mm-hmm. it just so happened that I I still knew people uh, uh, the Coffeeville coach I still you know guys that I know and so I was yeah. familiar with the conference and. Uh, and so, you know, the conference had a reputation even, even then when I was playing and, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's obviously been uh, amplified a little bit because of the, uh, the last Chance U uh, episodes. But um, yeah, I started off in, at Garden City Community College and from there I went to Kansas Wesleyan University uh, and uh, finished up my, my undergrad and played football there. Okay, so real quick tangent, what did you, what did you think about about Coach Brown, <laughs> you know something. Honestly, I I wouldn't coach the way he coached. I'm just I don't think anybody can can say I'm gonna I'm gonna be that coach. Yeah. I think you have to be yourself. Oh, yeah. But I think the one thing that I, I think people didn't see that 
that I saw um, because he was he was pretty abrasive and and mm-hmm. you know uh, and sometimes that could be off putting obviously but you know, honestly I I felt like I was watching a guy who genuinely cared about the guys he was coaching. Oh yeah. Some some of his, his you know choice of words and, and his, his demeanor, t- tactics and his yeah. tactics and, and his tact. Yeah. Um, again, not not me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I'm not a guy that would ever uh, look at another coach and say um, you're you're a bad guy. You're a bad coach. Yeah. Um, I, you know I, I don't I don't feel like that's my place ever. Um, but uh, you know something honestly, I, I thought that he he cared about his guys. He genuinely did, and he wanted what was best for him. And and you know sometimes I think he. Um, you know, he said things that maybe he shouldn't have, and it you know, got him in, in, a, in a bad spot with people. Yeah. But um, you know, honestly, in the end, I didn't I didn't have that much of a problem with with him because it it appeared as though most of his players didn't have a problem with him. So the things that you that you saw on the on the last chance, you you know, all that stuff's edited, and, and mm-hmm. you know, I think sometimes they they edit it in a way that that makes it look a certain way because it draws oh, yeah. the audience in. So, um, you know, the, the, the quarterback from the first season, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I saw him later on on some television program and he was still, hey, I, I, I love that guy. Yeah. So, obviously, we didn't see things on, on Last Chance U. There were some things that were unseen oh, yeah. that, that drew those kids in. So. Uh, again, I, I I couldn't coach like he did, um, but I, I definitely would not criticize him for for loving his players and trying to do what was best for them, and, and that part of it I can respect. Yeah, I, they they for sure tried to villainize him. I mean, but you like you, in shows like that, you always have to somebody got to play the bad guy. Yeah. Um, but then, like for some people, I mean, like you definitely know this. Like when when he taking kids out the hood. Some of them need that foot in the ass. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think and that that's was what, what he was providing. And, and yeah. he was someone who I think came from that that environment to a certain extent. And so yeah. he knew. Um, yeah, you you know, we, we say this in education all the time that you have to meet kids where they are. Yep. And I think that's what he was trying to do. And I think that was sort of the, uh, the way that he came up. Mm-hmm. And that's the way he coached guys. So, again, um, far, far be it for me to, to criticize his tactics so again I wouldn't do that but I'm, I'm not him yeah uh, but again I, I did I, I really had a measure of respect for the fact that he was trying to do the right thing for his kids and I think as a coach um, I, I think you have to do that yeah. um, uh, you know but there there was there was one episode though which it kind of cracked me up because he was like yeah, I ain't gotta watch film I just, I just do it. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> you must, you must be good because I, I, I'm not that smart. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I would have to do a lot more uh, in terms of my preparation. But uh, again, I, I don't have, a, I don't have a problem with the guy. I would never, never criticize him publicly. I think he was someone who, again, he was, he was doing what he needed to do for his guys. Yeah. So, so I, I think like, I was, he had, he had. Enough personality for the whole damn staff. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Like, cause I was, I was just thinking, like, while you're talking about like the staff when, when I was in high school, and I feel like the staff as a collective was like equal what <laughs> what he was. Um, it was like he was. I mean, he you you were you were in it and you were you were more of an observer yeah. until something needed to be said I, yeah. I, you know something i've always been away I, I tried to to let my coaches coach because i had the f- good fortune of working for coaches who would let me coach yeah and so i i tried to let my coaches coach but then obviously i had to uh i had to step in uh and 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 regulate some things i can't remember if it, if it was uh your senior year uh, when uh, we had that Saturday game, uh, I can't remember. Was that? Yeah, it was Saturday. A, um, it was. A, it was Saturday. It was like homecoming. homecoming. It was at Van Horn and uh, versus uh, uh, Summer Christian. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When when uh, 
one of, one of my daughters had a softball game, so I told the, the, the oh, yeah, you, to, yeah. I said, hey, you guys get them, get them breakfast, and get them. I mm -hmm. said, I'll, I'll show up a little bit late. Yeah. And uh, so the coaches took it upon themselves, like, you know, man, we've been tight. So let's, uh, let's let them loosen up. And so I pull yeah. up, and this guy's throwing the frisbee, yeah. and they got the music Playing going. Playing a blast of music in yeah, the and I got out room. of the car, and I took a look <laughs> at, at Coach Bradley and Coach Page, and, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm fixing the fire some motherfuckers right now. And they're like, look, we know yeah. how you are, but trust yeah. us on this. And you know something? Oh, yeah. I got I that did. ass. I did. I trusted them, and then we went out and, and we, we put it on them. So, yeah. uh, you know, again, so there's, I, I don't know everything, and I don't, I don't know of any coach who would tell you that I, I know all the stuff. I, I, I know what I believe, I know what I want. Uh, and I try to communicate that to um, my coaches. I try to communicate that to the players. Um, I've been on both sides of it um, as, a, as a, an assistant and a head coach. And so, um, you know, currently working as an assistant and there's really, there's not a lot of difference, especially if you're in a situation where, um, you know, whoever is in charge is, is letting the, the coaches coach their way. Yeah. And uh, but uh, uh, yeah, there just has to be a lot of communication, and and sometimes you, you have to have some trust. Yeah. So that and that was like one of the memorable things for me that year was there. You know, it was like me, Tony, Levi, we're like Jarvin, yeah. we're like the the really vocal ones, and y'all was y'all was sometimes. Y'all would just let us roll with it and get in, get in somebody's ass yeah. if we need to. I remember, I remember the, I don't remember what he did, but you remember when uh, JJ or Tony picked JJ up and slammed him? Yeah, yeah, and I do remember that. Yeah, he was, it was in the, uh, it was in the, uh, whatever it was, what would you call the building? E building. When they yeah. were still there, we were inside there when when he did it, and then then JJ thought you know he wanted to quit, and, mm -hmm. and I, I went and talked him out of it. And, uh, um, but, you know, I was also very honest with, with him about, you know, this is the reason why that happened to me, <laughs> yeah. you know, because you, you have to be accountable to, to your teammates. And, yeah. and uh, you know, there have been some times where I've been really fortunate to have, to have senior leaders that led because, you know, you heard me say that, I, I, leaders, I need you to lead. Yep. And, uh, and sometimes... Uh, and, and I've had those teams I've had to regulate because sometimes um, players mistake being a leader for just being a boss. I don't, I don't need bosses. Yeah. And you know, I mean, uh, I, I, I can be my own boss. I don't need anybody boss. I just need people leading. So, right. um, you know, when, when you can, when you can, you know, express what you need from a leader, and then they take that and apply it to. Uh, situations and, and personalities, and, and you, you get something. I think we had that oh, yeah. in our senior year. So yeah, because that was like one of the biggest things is you could you kind of see like we separated ourselves from the rest of the team, not just based on like being I don't want to say appointed leaders because it was something we had to earn because we we were the hardest workers in the room. Yeah. So it was it was just something that. Like even the younger guys is like okay, we know like that's yeah that's that's the dudes you gotta <laughs> you gotta listen to. As a leader, you have to be beyond reproach, and um, and then you got you gotta be the hardest working guy in the room because you know and, and you you knew this because um, when it came down to it, the, the first butt chewing was gonna be was gonna be y'all yeah. right, and so uh, you know you earned that right to to get on your teammates when they weren't really following through because you know. You know, they say crap runs downhill, so you gonna you gonna be the first one to get it. So yeah. that's that's how it works. I remember, I was like, I remember one time, and I mean, I was I was completely cool with it. Um, do you remember the time that Bradley? I don't remember. I don't remember what the hell somebody did, but somebody fucked it up for everybody. And do you remember he's? It was like the one hundred hundreds. 100 hill like it was he listed probably 10 things you had to do if you i want to say it was like during the summer yeah. like if you missed with it was if it was like an unexcused yeah. absence from summer workouts and i don't even know if it was 
I don't remember if it was like a miscommunication or something like that between me and Bradley. But, um, you know, I, he was like, hey, you got blah, blah, blah. So, I, you know, I man up, get my work in, and I want to say I'm on lap mm, three, four. And he was like, hey, uh, you good. Go to practice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God, because that, that shit was going to be like a week <laughs> long with the punishment. Uh, but, but, yeah, I remember... I mean, like you said, y'all held us accountable when yeah when we, when we needed to be. And and he was a good hammer. And even as a player, Coach Bradley was 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 one of those guys who. Even today, when I evaluate a leader, and and I sort of hold that that player up to the to the blueprint, Stephon Bradley's the blueprint. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know he as a player he came and and. You know, he stayed the night at my house and watched them with me all night. And every mistake that everybody made, he got his butt chewed by me. What everybody else did. Yeah. But then again, he he followed through and he made sure that that stuff was corrected. Um, and and guys that didn't want to follow rules for three months out of the year follow rules. And and again, that's that's what you want, uh, you know, out of a leader. And so a lot of times when it came down to discipline, I would just say, hey, I need this done. Yeah. And then I wouldn't pay attention to how he did it. I just I knew it was going to get done. And uh, that that's that's very rare. Um, but I but I've had some teams where I've been able to do that. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so going on going on to the next question. Now I I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. Well, what is your favorite position to coach? Quarterbacks. Quarter, I, I figured it was quarterbacks. Yeah, and you know, I, I think probably just being familiar with it and, and having the opportunity to coach it uh, as uh, an assistant. Um, my my first coaching job uh, in Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, I started off the first year as uh, the freshman coach, one of the freshmen. In fact, I was a freshman assistant. And uh, um, but and this is kind of a cool story because when when I took the job. Uh, you know, I, I told the athletic director, I, I, I have to coach football. I, I'll coach some other sports for everything, but I have to coach football. Yeah. And the athletic director said, well, you know, we got a guy that's just like you, fresh out of college, um, and, and he wants to coach football too. And I said, well, I tell you what, I go, I got a coach. I said, some will be there, so you can give him the money, but I got to coach football. And as it turned out, they told him the same thing, and he said the same thing. He gave the other guy the money. Yeah. I just want to coach football, and so they split the the, the stipend, mm -hmm. and we were both assistant freshman coaches and became good friends. And uh, um, you know, it's it exemplifies really what a young coach should want to do, mm -hmm. and uh, and wanting to get involved and, and and doing whatever it takes to get involved. But um, yeah, I I. I really had a, a, a good time with, with uh, those individuals. And, but after the first year, um, I went from being an assistant freshman coach to offensive coordinator, coaching quarterbacks, and calling plays in varsity games. And, and uh, so I got kind of thrown in the fire. But I've, I've always you know, had an opportunity to uh, coach quarterbacks. And, uh, and fortunately for me, I've been in some other places, and, and so through the course of a 30-year coaching career, I've coached every position. Yeah. But if you if you just say, hey, what, what position do you want to take over, that, that would be the position. So, who's who's the best quarterback you ever had? Oh goodness, I, there's, there's there's been a few, but I, I think Tony Winningham was probably the best athlete leader. Um, you know, executor of, of assignments. I mean, the, the the whole thing because you know, a lot of guys go, "Well, let me play quarterback because I can throw." Well, that's that's the last thing I'm worried about, right? So, yeah. Um, in terms of being able to, to execute everything that we need to execute, I'd say he's. I, I off the top of my head, I can't think of anybody better than him. Uh, so, uh, but he was. I mean, yeah, he did, he did everything that we needed him to do, and and, yeah. uh, and more. So. Uh, yeah, and I've, I've, had, I've had a few good ones, but yeah, he's probably the top of the list. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a good quarterback, except for the few touchdowns he took from <laughs> I remember, uh, I don't, was it, uh, 
Um, 40, 45 ISO pass? Is that what it was? 44, 45? Uh, yeah, I, zone I pass. Zone, zone pass. pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he took a few of those from me. <laughs> he was like, oh, he's open. Let me run it. Let me run it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no hard feelings. Um, actually, you know, he lives, he lives not the William Walker Company. I'm pretty okay. sure that's his building. I, so I knew he was over here somewhere, but I wasn't exactly um, sure where. Yeah, I want to say it's that. Or no, never what mind. View, though. This is this is crazy. It's back there. But yeah, he lives. I've seen him over the past. I saw him like a few months ago, and I've seen him probably like four or five times over the past two, three weeks. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I, yeah. I knew because he's he's still doing the basketball thing. I know yeah. that uh, um, probably with COVID. Um, not have an opportunity to go overseas and, and do that that yeah. part of it, but I know he's still involved in it and, and doing well. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to another point in terms of you know what I do and, and, and what I've tried to accomplish with my career, and um, you know the the number one priority that I've always had as a coach is the to development. Yeah, and um, so it it's it's. It warms my heart to see you and Tony and, and all the guys I've been, and there's so many, you know, from all the schools I've coached that, that I I can, you know, run into them, you know, at the carnival, at the grocery store, and they're, they're holding down jobs and raising families and, and contributing to society in a positive way. Yeah. And, and that makes me feel good because, you know, obviously there's the other side of that coin. And, you know, there's been some, uh, there's been some tragedies. There's been some guys that, that you know took those 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 wrong turns and made bad choices. And, and honestly, I, I I take it all personal. Yeah. You know, you, you know how I am. And so um, yeah, those 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 hurtful uh, events um, are always there. But but I always try to focus on on those those positive ones. And so it again doing this is 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 a huge thing for me more than you know because. It's just indication um, that you know it's another one of my guys doing the right thing. So yeah, I like it. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so the next thing is, I mean, I, now I know it's like it's a very much old school thing, but your scheme is power eye, run the ball down your damn throat. Where did you get? Where did you get that? Who got that? Gave that to you? You know. So I played at Kansas Wesleyan University, and uh, two of my coaches actually played at Nebraska okay. um, for uh, Coach Devaney, and then um, and then later on Coach Osborne. And so, in fact, one of our coaches was like the MVP of the like 1977 Blue Bonnet Bowl, something okay. along those lines. And so, um, really, that's what we ran. We ran. We ran power I. Uh, uh, we ran we ran option out of it. We ran ISO power out of it, and so that that's I kind of developed um, my my love of, of just kind of imposing your will on other people. And that to me that's that's real football. And, uh, and again, I've I've coached in other schemes, and I've, I've allowed coaches to um, to you know, spread out and then do some other things. And yeah. and really, when it, when it gets down to it, um, as a coach, you have to to put your players in the best position to be successful. And sometimes that might mean going four wide and, and maybe throwing some empty sets uh, in every once in a while if, if that's what your your, your talent uh, dictates. But uh, uh, if yeah, if I have my choice, we're we're going to run. We're going to run power and we're going to run counter. Um, and, yeah. and we're going to do it until you... Until you stop it. Until you stop it. And, and then, then guess what? More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, damn, I, I forgot what I was... See, like, okay, so I remember... So, like, when I transferred in, I, it was basketball season, you know, so I didn't, I didn't really know anything um, about the team. So we hit the summer... And we start doing seven on seven. I'm like, oh shit, I'm I'm gonna run it up, cause I mean like we're playing this van. What what we had like thirty kids, uh, maybe your senior, your senior year. I think we ended up with about fifty. Really? Yeah, but we had a lot right, of young man. kids. We had yeah, a lot yeah. of young kids. Oh, um, so. but yeah. So like I was, you know, and so that's fifty on the whole team, or that's from varsity to yeah, yeah. The varsity the whole, the whole JV. Squad. That was everybody. 
And, uh, you know, we're going to seven on sevens against big schools, Lee Summit, uh, Lee Summit West. Like, I mean, uh, there was one, I think we played like Lee Summit West and when didn't like Don Cheadle's nephew or some, some shit. Um, yeah, and also, well, I tell you who wasn't there was the kid that's playing in in the major leagues now. Uh, is that Harrison? Monte Harrison. Oh, yeah, he um, would have tore our ass up. Yeah, and so I remember having a conversation with Coach Bain, the head coach of West. And he yeah, was kind of ticked off. You know, he should have been here, and he was at some national baseball thing. And thinks he's a baseball player, and, uh, and yeah, he's probably sure. right. Yeah, but uh, but he wasn't there, and we uh, we played at least West in seven on seven, of course. You know, obviously, seven on seven is not it's not real football, and and it, it doesn't mean anything in terms of you know how you're going to be as a football team. Yeah. But for a school like ours, um, to to really take it to a big oh, yeah. a big class school that was you know churning out state championships. Could, uh, did we we went one and one. We did, went one and one. Yeah, we, we, we beat, beat them, them the first time, and then, and then we lost in the, uh, the like the semifinals. Yeah, uh, and uh, but it was still a huge. I think that was the only game we lost in yeah. that tournament, and uh, uh, and so that really set the tone for the rest of the summer. And and uh, you know I think that you know obviously I remember your senior year. It, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but that was probably the best team we had at the end. Yeah, that. Um, and so um, you know, we, you know, we, we, we never we never like that last game unless it's you know you win the state championship. But uh, in terms of what we were able to accomplish and, and what we were able to build uh, throughout the the course of the summer and throughout the fall, yeah. I mean, it was a fun season. It really was. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. There was there was a few tough ones in there. What the uh, Raytown? That was that was tough. You know, or was that? Yeah, that was right yeah, time. Yeah, we ended up playing because uh, the year before we had played, we because we were missing a game, and we got uh, what team did we play? Santa Fe, which is a really small. In fact, now they're playing. They're playing eight man. I know the mm. coach, and he's a great coach and a good guy. But I mean, it, it, it was just it was just a mismatch. Yeah. So you know, it was cold, and we went there, and, and we just beat up on them. And, and I, I mean, I called the dogs off, but. Um, you know that game was over in the first quarter, and <laughs> yeah. so they they didn't want to play us the next year. And so at Raytown, it played somebody that was kind of the same situation. So mm-hmm. they just made an arrangement where we just sort of flipped opponents okay. uh, to create two more more competitive type games. And so you know, it, and it was a disappointing loss for us. But um, you know, I've I've talked to some of the coaches that were on that staff, mm-hmm. and. And that game scared them more than, than I thought it would. Yeah. And in terms of how they felt during the game and, and coaching it, they really felt fortunate to, to come out of that game with uh, a victory. Oh, yeah. Although I felt like I felt like we left we left too many mistakes on the field and and, and, and really handed it over to them. But uh, they they beat us, you know what I mean? And, and it, it happens. But uh, it was probably a more competitive game than than my my. Recollection allows me to. to, to oh have. yeah, we should have won that. I because I want to say we got stuffed on the goal line like two or three times. Three times at the end of the half. And, yeah, and and should have scored uh, right before halftime, and that would have either tied it or put us ahead. And we didn't score, and then we we just didn't finish. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember I, I, we only I lost by we lost by like a, a score, didn't we? Like, I don't think we lost by more than. It, I think we lost by eight or nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was then Hogan. That was just. That you was know, that was it, ugly. The, you know those games again, uh, and we felt like it was ugly, but we ended up playing some pretty tough games with them uh, right when when we were at our strongest, and so like your senior year and the year before and the year after. We played them pretty tough, and then after that, you know, and, and before that, definitely we weren't very competitive at all. But yeah, we we had a run where we we played them pretty competitively, but we just never could get over the hump over it. But they were they were such a they just had a lot of talent. Oh yeah, they just did. Cause I, that didn't have I, it was before I was there, but uh, they had a kid go to Mizzou, didn't they? Like, yeah, like a receiver uh, corner. His uh, last name was 
Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah, and he was like a four-two kid, and and uh, again, you know, just to give you an example of how how good you know that kind of talent is, we had a free safety um, who was a decent player, but it wasn't four-two. Yeah. So we backed him up. Uh, we had gotten him in a third down situation, and we backed him up 25 yards and told him to bail. Yeah. And they ran. Cheryl's on the scene, and, and, and went long. And he <laughs> ran past our, our free safety, who was probably at about 35, 40 yards by that time, and just yeah. ran right past him and mm-hmm. off to the races. So, uh, you know, uh, it's it goes back to the old coaching adage. Sometimes you, you your coaches talk about it. it's not the X's and O's but the Jimmy's and Joe's and you know if my guys are better than your guys I'm gonna beat you oh yeah. you know I don't care what you're running but uh, uh, yeah we've seen we've seen some talented guys over the course of uh, these, these all these years of, of being involved in this so. yeah yeah it was uh, I I enjoyed because I don't I don't remember if I ever told you and okay does the name Jimmy Tucker have you ever heard Jimmy Tucker mm-hmm. When I said I at, at, in high school, I probably could have been a better coach than him. <laughs> I just so I I didn't know this. Um, he actually took the job down to Holden. Yeah, I knew that. Lost every game this year. I, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that that had happened, but I I did know that they uh, they ended up making a change, and and so I don't know where he ended up, but I know that um, because the the athletic director there. Um, uh, had been a coach at Sherwood, mm-hmm. and Sherwood was one of the one of our conference schools at Van Horn, so I yeah. knew him. So I had had some conversations with him, so I knew that Coach Tucker had left, and and I didn't really ask, you know, what the circumstances were. But uh, you know, sometimes that happens in, in this in this business. But uh, you 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 know, we'd had those conversations, and uh, yeah, and you know, something honestly, uh, you know, his loss was was our gain. And that's, uh, you know, I'll always be thankful to him for that, at least. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm just to describe to you guys uh, that listen and don't know who he is. uh, He, okay, so I don't remember what game it was. I was the center uh, for Grain Valley at the time, and they were running 22, I want to say. We're on the, we're inside the five. They're running 22. He calls the timeout. We tell him, hey, QB sneak all day. We're going to score. I don't like just, oh, no, no. We're going to run the same run play that they have been calling out because they know we're going to run it. And we're like, coach, I promise you we're going to score. QB sneak. Didn't want to run it. Well, I, it was St. Joe Benton. You know how bad St. Joe Benton is. <laughs> we lost that damn game. <laughs> I like I mean, it was stuff like that. Okay, um, I t- I not tore. I sprained my LCL and and strained my lateral hamstring, so I couldn't like I couldn't move laterally. That's like the best thing about me. And I go to the doctor, and. Uh, you know, they're like, you know, we want you to sit out at least a week, say I'm feeling blah, blah, blah. I go go back to school and tell him. He called me selfish because I was thinking about my future. I'm like, I'm not trying to go out here and like tear something, I'm trying to play damn Harrisonville, <laughs> not in the playoff. Like why? And he was like, the, you know what? That's just really selfish. And I looked at him like that. At that moment, I knew I was going to transfer. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I... I would never, uh, you know, criticize another coach, but I will say that um, again, uh, I've, I've done a lot of, lot of uh, you know, reading and studying on on you know different coaching styles and coaching philosophies, and, and a lot of people talk about what they call the uh, the, the transformational approach versus the transactional approach, and. Um, I, I've I've tried to commit my career to to being a transformational guy. I don't want to be transactional. I don't want to be you know I'm going to do this for you. You do this for me because what happens is you get into those situations where maybe you're hurt and you may cost me a game 
and it for me it can't be about that yeah. it, it, you know what I mean it just it can't I you know I, I care about my guys you yeah. know what I mean and so I, I care about them not just as a football player but I care about them as a student um, I, I care about them treating their their parents right I, I care about them treating their girlfriends right um, and I, I want them to to you know if, if, if they're good enough and they can make it to the NFL I'm, I'm right behind you but eventually I want you to own your own business or be a policeman or a fireman or a lawyer or a teacher or a construction worker as long as you're taking care of your business and and, and that's what the to me the vehicle of, of football is is important um, because it gives you an opportunity to develop those skills yeah um, the the rest of it is fleeting and, and again I I'm as competitive as anybody, and I, I freaking hate losing. Yeah. But um, if that is the only thing I'm worried about, then yeah. it, you know you're gonna lose anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, I I, I I would never criticize another coach, but I I kind of appreciate him for uh, you know <laughs> sending sending you my way. So. Uh, yeah, I I appreciate him too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like there is just one one more story. Um, I, I was like, I don't, it was something like recruiting, like online recruiting stuff that, you know, that helped you get looks. So I, I actually got like a lot of letters and emails just from sending out film like myself. Um, but so I had like a meeting or something like that, that I like, or like a, video call or phone call or something like that with one of the guys from there um and so i, I was like hey i'm gonna need to go like 30 minutes early from some it was like a summer practice or something and he gave me a lecture i'm the only recruit uh recruiting help you need blah 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 and like, i'm sitting here looking at this guy like you're telling me you're the only recruiting help i need the two best players I've ever seen in my life. You just sent to Baker and that Missouri State's good, but he probably should have went D1, yeah. like a, like D1 major. Uh, major. Yeah. And I, so you telling me I'm the only, uh, you're the only recruitment to help I need. I'm like, Get out my damn yeah. face. Yeah, you know, when, when guys say stuff like that, it's it to me it's an automatic red flag yeah they, they are they are people to be avoided and uh you know they, they're trying to they're trying to make money and they they want to try and steal some of it from you you know what i mean and yeah. so uh you know I, I don't mind the the recruiting services um but the bottom line is that any any college that's that's interested in a player um they are going to call <laughs> their high they school coach. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, gonna, they're definitely gonna go through you. Yeah, they, it doesn't yeah. matter how many recruiting services turn you on to that school. They're still gonna call your high school coach. Oh, yeah. So uh, that to me is still very important. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, they, that's what like I want to say. I probably talked, like actually talked on phone or in person with probably about eight coaches. I think I'm at. I think I might have sent stuff to two or three of them, and hey, you were the rest. So I, I mean, I I knew you were like I was confident. Hell, even before the season, I was confident that you were going to be a lot better recruit, recruiting help than oh, yeah. yeah than he I mean, was. Because that's, that's you know again, um, I knew that was a goal of yours. We had some other guys that had the same goal, and yeah. and, and part of my responsibility is is to um, help you be successful, and and that's that's part of it. And so. Um, yeah, it's been, you know, again, my, my pleasure to help a lot of guys. And, and so, uh, you know, sometimes I, I get a kick out of watching some of these movies where the, you know, the coach, oh, I'm going to get your scholarship. Uh, come on. That's, that's not real. And, and it offends me a little bit. Even I know it's, it's a movie and it's, it's, it's meant for uh, entertainment purposes, probably for people who don't coach. Yeah. Uh, but I, I get a little irritated when I see that stuff on, on TV and, and on the movies. But because uh, that's that's what we do. That's part of it. Yeah, I speaking of like the stuff that offends. So <clears throat> I don't know if you heard the show All American. 
It's a it's like a high school football show. I mean, it's a like a fictional show. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, my best friend, he keeps on telling me to watch it. Keeps on telling me to watch it. I saw a clip on Twitter, and this is what it's like. I'm not gonna watch this show ever. They they did like a football clip where he was he was running a route, and well, I, he took ten steps on this damn route. <laughs> But they they put it in slow motion, so it looked like he was doing some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, never will I watch that show. That the football part of that is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah it's, it's like, not realistic. I can't I can't do it. No, and, and I've not seen very many that are uh, that are realistic enough uh, for me to watch. And uh, uh, you know, at times, remember the Titans was pretty good, but also at times, remember the, the Titans was like that's. Oh, yeah. That's hokey. That's 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 bull. You know, no, nobody's nobody's doing that. But uh, like I said, it, I, I understand the, the the entertainment aspect of it. Yeah. Was so. Remember the Titans is my favorite football movie. What's your favorite football? Oh, by yeah, it's not even close. Yeah. Uh, remember the Titans. Is Friday Night Lights is it. close for me. The uh, yeah, well, hell, the show's good too. But yeah, Friday Night Lights is close. I really can't think of. Now, you know they 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 refer to me in Friday Night Lights, right? Uh, and I've never seen it because um, I just have not had the opportunity to watch it. But um, I, I know people who have, and so when when that the book was set was 1988. So in the movie, uh, I guess the quarterback in the movie is being recruited by Kansas Wesley, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're like, "Yeah, we we want you because our quarterback sucks." <laughs> that's funny I, I never knew that that's funny as hell okay um, you think you can could you break down your coaching philosophy into three points well in, in terms of what I'm what I communicate to players um, you know I, I well first of all um, you know, we, we talked about scheme, and uh, uh, you know, again, I learned this from from being around some really good coaches, and and probably my my hero in this profession is, is Harold Wamsgans, who uh, coached in the Shawnee Mission District. He, he coached at Lee Summit North, and I worked with him there. And, and you know, one of the things he told me um, was that in order to be a successful team, you have to be able to run the ball and be able to stop the run, uh, and so. Uh, in terms of scheme, that's that's a key element. Uh, uh, in terms of what I communicate to the players, um, uh, again, X's and O's can can be can be fleeting. But if you uh, you know give great effort and you win the hitting contest, yeah, uh, you have an opportunity to be successful in, in, in a football game. And, uh, and so I. Again, I always try to communicate those two things uh, almost every day in practice. Um, and I also uh, wanted to make sure that, that our players were, were proud to be a part of what we were doing. And so, again, I, I, I would say it a lot, be, be proud of who you are, be proud of what you are. And, yep. and uh, you know, I didn't invent any of that. Those, those were things that, that I pulled from other coaches, and, and I believe it. And uh, uh, I believe that if you adhere to it, uh, you know, you, you have an opportunity to have a successful football team. Yep. And when he said, he said he says that every practice, he says that every practice, he on the kneel down, you got uh, hell, what was the first one? I already forgot it. Give great effort. Give great effort. <laughs> win the hitting contest. And you you forgot the third one. Got to execute. Got to execute. Got to execute. Yeah. So he would say those. You know, everybody's coach is talking after practice. Everybody's on the knee, and then uh, on the break now, you be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you are. Break it down. <laughs> I'm yeah. That's that's it. Is in in my head. Well, you know, I, yeah, that's 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 a good thing, you know, because um, um, again, I, I I never wanted to be that guy that that said things just to pay lip service to it, and so I said it every day because I believed it, and yeah. I, I wanted the players to believe it. So, uh, and I, I think it's worked for for me, and it's worked for for a lot of people. So, one of my one of my favorite things you ever said, I want 
I want to say I I specifically remember you saying it at Hogan. I don't remember if you said it after that. Um, but when you said burn the burn the ship story, <laughs> I yeah. that, I was because I never heard it and I was like that that was a. That's a good little story. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that that was one again. It was I, I didn't invent it. It was just something that was uh, said to me, and I believe it, I think it was one of my college coaches that that talked about the the Vikings, and and uh, uh, there there were occasions where um, they would they would beat uh, sort of a, a formidable um, foe, and you know the the Vikings were known for for pillaging, and so they would go to different places and they would basically steal all their stuff and so there were times where people were, were waiting for them so when they when they faced those what seemed to be overwhelming odds insurmountable circumstances they would say burn the ships because if you burn the ships now you can't retreat because there's nowhere to retreat so you only have the choice of of fighting and you have to fight like your life depends on it because in in that situation it, it in does. fact does yeah. um, and so you know they, I, I, that's not one I always break out but you know there's times where you, you have to you have to try to implore your team to to reach down and, and, and grab a little bit more yeah. because you, you just because you don't have a choice and again it, it obviously will serve you well if you're able to, to be successful in terms of, of a, a contest of the game um, but Sometimes again, you got you got to burn the ships uh, when when you're when you're married, and you have to burn the ships when you're raising kids because you have no choice but to be successful. Oh yeah. And uh, and so uh, again, I, I I don't pay lip service to that stuff. Uh, uh, a lot of those phrases, and I, I have a lot of them, but it's again, it's stuff that I got from other coaches um, that that made me believe, uh, and and in turn, uh, you know made me believe in them because they believed in me. So. All right, so what would you say the biggest challenge is being a head coach? Being a head coach, the, the, the biggest challenge by far is dealing with all the, the, the nonsense that has nothing to do with the game. Yeah. And so one of the reasons why I chose the, to be more of a manager and let my coaches coach um, was because I was always putting out fire. Yeah. I was always, you know, if it, it's a, a parent that's upset about something, or, or you know, the one of the administrators didn't like something that one of the kids did, and I, I have to go fix that, and I have to go make sure that we're holding kids accountable, and and I have to go to teachers and make sure that our players are doing the right thing in the classroom, and. Uh, so it was, there, there was always, especially at Van Horn, there was always something uh, going on yeah. um, that, that took my attention away from the game. And so, uh, again, I was fortunate that I had good coaches um, that, could, that could carry on um, while I attended to those other matters. And so there are a lot of times where I, even in practice, um, you know, I, I have to worry about uh, things that, that aren't even happening on the field. Yeah. And, and dealing with that and trying to, to coach simultaneously. And it's, it's, again, that's probably the most difficult thing about being a head coach is you have to worry about the world turning. Um, and, and the difference, you know, again, being an assistant coach is, um, you know, you, you do what you, what you need to do for, uh, for the team, uh, for the staff. And, you know, in a lot of ways, at the end of the day, you go home and, and you know, drink soda and eat some chicken and watch TV and you know you, it's it's it is a lot easier and uh, um, and it's, it's it's not that I don't enjoy being a head coach and I and I don't feel like I'm I'm you know a a bad practitioner of dealing with those things but uh, yeah it, it is the hardest part yeah I, yeah I could definitely see that the first thing I thought of when I asked the question was parents yeah oh yeah it's um it's, you know, I, I try to be as, as upfront and as honest, and I try to build good relationships with, with parents. Uh, I think you have to uh, if you, if you want to be successful. Um, but at the same time, uh, I've always created a line. 
And once you get to the line, I don't, I don't, I don't need input. I, I, I've never needed a parent to tell me how to coach. Yeah. Um, I've, you know, if if you want me to support you uh, in in you know the development of your of your son, uh, I'm I'm all in. Um, if if you if you want to tell me that we're running the wrong offense. And you know why is my son playing? Well, it's a whole different deal, and so uh, I, I'm prepared for it. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be it can be a, a, a huge pain in the rear. And, I, and I've had some really negative experiences uh, with with parents. Um, you know, when I was at Ruskin High School, I had a, I had a parent that was upset because um, basically I, I I benched his son. Uh, who was playing offensive line for us, and he, you know, frankly, he was our our worst performer for about two weeks straight. And we had had another kid who um, like broke his foot over the summer mm -hmm. and was was back. And so we were evaluating film, and as a staff, we decided that hey, we're gonna, we're, we got to make a change uh, at, at right guard. And uh, so I, I pulled the kid aside and said, we're going to go with this different player. So you're going to have every opportunity to earn your spot back, but right now he's playing better than you. And so uh, during the entire game, we actually it was a Saturday game, uh, and we were we were playing at Raytown. And at that time, the the uh, the the track, um, or I should say, the bleachers were inside the track, which meant that the fans were right on top of us. Yeah. And so this, dad, every this, single this thing. dad is just, just, just running his mouth. And honestly, I didn't hear a lot of it. Um, but, uh, um, you know, obviously other people did. And so after the game, uh, he, he literally wanted to get physical with me. And, and he tried to do a little chest bump thing and, and you know, he did it and kind of popped back and I'm still standing there. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I could kill this guy. I could kill him and, and be done with it. Um, and then one of my other coaches uh, just grabbed him and pulled him away and said, get away from us, uh, which administration tried to come down on him and I had to, to get in the way of that. Yeah. Um, uh, but the, the kid's mom um, was trying to storm into our locker room my wife was there, was holding my my uh, my third kid, Michelle, who was an infant at the time, and uh, literally about knocked uh, her out of my wife's arms. And uh, so, you know, I finally got administration to get them out of there. And I, I, at that point, told them, I said, the next time someone threatens my family like that, they're going to have to they go, the coach. Yeah, they're going to get the hand. I'm going to jail. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I tried to, to, to show some restraint in that area, and, and a lot of times I can because, um, you know, you know my wife, my family comes to all the games, and, mm -hmm. and my wife is no shrinking violet. So yeah. uh, if you want to be in the stands <laughs> talking about coaches, she's she going to tell you what, what you can do with your opinions. Oh, yeah. And, and she's not afraid of anything. So, uh, you know, usually I just let her kind of take care of it, and she can pretty much squash it. But, uh, um, yeah, there, there have been some times where, um, you know, dealing with parents, has has bled into them either saying things or, or doing things that affect my family. And once we get to that point, that crosses the line. Yeah. And and I I don't hold myself responsible for my actions at that point. But but outside of that, you know, it is what it is and I, I can deal with it respectfully as long as the respect is on both sides of the, of the aisle. So Yeah. And why why is it that it's almost always now, almost because there are some instances where it is, you know, a good player, but it's almost always the parent of a player who really ain't that good. <laughs> it's, that's almost always the case. It's, it, it is, and it, because I think part of it is that um, I think sometimes um, parents, especially dads, uh, when it comes to football, are trying to live vicariously through their kid. Yeah. And so when that kid is not playing, it to them represents a failure on their part, which mm -hmm. is really silly because um, a lot of times that kid that's not 
playing every down on offense and defense is playing on special teams. And, and as coaches, we see the value of that. Yeah. That kid's valuable to us, but because he's not starting at receiver or starting on the offensive line or starting at quarterback, it, it becomes a, a failure. And, and, and that's, I think that's what a lot of these, uh, uh, again, especially dads, unfortunately, see is they, 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 it represents a failure on their part. And so yeah. they lash out at coaches and, and you know, uh, and I'm, I'm not afraid to, to, you know, make that evidence known to them sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. I just have to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so we got a few more questions. Um, okay. Best player you've ever coached? Stephon Bradley. And, Stephon Bradley. And, uh, uh, and there's some, there's some, there's some close ones in there because if I if I made a list, um, you're on that list, Tony's on that list, uh, you know. But but in terms of of doing everything, um, yes, Stephon is is just simply the best player ever coached. Uh, um, you know, he was so intense and and so committed. Um, and, and the funniest thing about, about coaching Stefan was, was when I took the job at Ruskin, I was literally told by three different people, he is going to be the first kid you kick off the team. He's going to be the first kid you throw off your team. And I just kind of looked at him, okay, whatever. And so uh, I told him that. See, and everybody said that you can be the first guy to kick off. And... Uh, he goes, what do you think? And I said, uh, I, I think it's time for you to play football. And that's all I need. All I need to be is, is committed and do what I ask. And we'll be fine. Like I'm not, I, don't, I don't pay attention to what people say. If I kick you off the team, it's going to be because something you did between me and you, not yeah. because of something they said. And uh, um, I mean, he was, he was at everything. Again, we had guys that didn't like to follow the rules, and he made them follow the rules. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there were some times where he was I said, ass uh, yeah, 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 you know something, that's <laughs> the funniest thing. I, I always told the coaches that because he wasn't a, he wasn't a big guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even as a high school player, he wasn't a big guy. And, uh, you know, there would be coaches go, why, why does he have that power over those guys? I said, I can tell you exactly why, because in grade school and middle school, he beat the hell out of every one of those guys. Yeah. And they were afraid of him, and and you know something, and he was a tough kid. He wasn't afraid to whoop somebody's ass. Oh and yeah. And so um, I remember the stories he used to. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, you know, I, the, the guys that would do things in school, and, and I would just like, you know, something like I got I, I got to go pick up my kid from daycare. I go. He needs to run. He needs to run. He needs to run a lot. I toss him my keys. I'm going home. Yeah. I get, so these guys better be ready to go tomorrow. I take care of it, and shit, he would. Get my house about an hour and a half later. Get my keys back, yeah. and the next day, these somebody just had halos. <laughs> you know what I, mean? it's like, I don't know what you did, but I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. Just, just keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and so, and, that, and that's why I put him there. I, again, I've had guys that that in terms of who I've coached, uh, um, you know, I've I've coached guys that played Division One ball that had all the stats, but just didn't have. The whole package. Yeah. Um, and out of all the guys who have come close to having the whole package, he's at the top of that list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. Yeah. I. I used to love hearing Bradley stories. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, between he, you and him, yeah, hey, y'all, y'all get some stories. And and you know, his senior year when he when he graduated, he was he graduated with the um, had, you know, when they, the state of Missouri lists the top. 10 in several categories, offensively and defensively, and so on. And the number of tackles in a season, he graduated sixth on that list. Now, everyone else who was ahead of him had played 14, 15 games. Yeah. Were, they were all players that had played in state championship games. He did it in 10 games, and he also did it in, in, in a 10-game season where I pulled him in two of those games because we just weren't we were getting our butts beat. You know, we were playing teams that were state ranked and, and one that was nationally ranked. And so I thought, I'm not going to get you hurt in this game. And yeah. I pulled him and literally had to, to, 
to take his helmet from him and, and coach the game with his helmet in my hand because he was he trying was to sad. get in. He was trying to get in. You know, yeah. and I had to make sure I had to have my daughter's bird dog and make sure he didn't bully some kid and giving up his helmet. So he brought, <laughs> and he did once. I mean, he literally did that. Got a kid's helmet, went back on the field, and I'm like, why is he back on it? Pull it back off. <laughs> um, but he was just he was just that kind of intense, uh, uh, you know, you know, personality, and so. Uh, yeah, he, he had a, a game where we played Warrensburg and he literally had something like 27 tackles and made every tackle in the third quarter. And it wasn't just like he just grabbed a guy and pulled him down. He blew people up. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and it was funny because the head coach was a, was a college teammate of mine and he thought that he had a playoff team. Mm -hmm. and we, we destroyed his season because he took two of his guys and put them on the, the, the IL for the rest of the year, you know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, you know, it was, he, he was just, he did things that were, that were pretty extraordinary for a high school player. Yeah. So, especially one his size. Yeah. Yeah, because, hell, I don't even, was he probably like 5'10"? Five, 5'10", five, five, in high school, he probably weighed 165. I think I listed him at 165. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he probably was buck 50. Yeah, that's um, ridiculous. But but hit hit harder than any any player I've ever seen. Mm. So yeah, he was something else. Yeah, I would I would love to watch that. I uh, Sydney always always used to uh, tell a story about whenever he came back the first game he came back, mm -hmm. and you know you know Sydney's goofy ass. Yes, he's <laughs> he's up in the stands, you know, talking to this person, talking to that person. Um, and like the, he's just telling stories. He's going around and said all these people here, crack, tackle by Stefan Bradley. You know, go on about tackle, crack, <laughs> tackle by Stefan Bradley. He and so he like turns around like, is little bro doing it yeah. like this? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's uh, yeah, it's something else. I I've got it on film of him just just. To Destroying people and really just demoralizing the entire team because they, they couldn't block him. I mean, it was, he was just relentless. And um, uh, yeah, it was it was, just, it was a sight to see sometimes. Yeah. All right, so uh, got all the questions done. Um, just shoot the shit about uh, the NFL real quick. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll start with the Chiefs. Uh, you know, because I pay attention to the draft and all that stuff. And what, who's who was your favorite draft pick or your favorite move of the off season for the Chiefs? Oh, the favorite move was was getting Orlando Brown. Yeah. Uh, that, that more was than huge. Joe Thune? So what? More than Joe Thune? Uh, yeah. You know something? Honestly, I I I, I think so. Um, but you know, he's close second though. Yeah. Yeah, he's close second. And, but you know. Honestly, and, and, and I don't want to be that sour grapes guy because I, I had a, a heck of an experience watching them win, you know, two seasons ago. But bottom line is, and then, you know, it's, again, I don't want to be a sour grapes guy, but they, they were playing with a depleted offensive line last yeah. year in the Super Bowl. And, you know, something, you, you just, that's, it doesn't matter who you're playing, Buccaneers, Packers, any team in the NFL. When, when when you're sort of piecemealing guys together, it's hard to win. Yeah, and, uh, you're playing twos and threes. It's yeah, it was, just, it was just the way it was, you know. It was just the way it was. So um, I, I think you know revamping the O line is 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 going to be a, a huge uh, a huge boost um, for the team. Um, you know, so I, I, that's what I'm looking forward to. I think this is probably the best. Now, I mean, granted, they still have to, you know, mesh and uh, have a little bit of continuity, but I, this is probably the best offensive line they've had in at least five years, if not ten. Since since that great O line they had, yeah, I'd probably the best the, the best collection of talent since you know when they had Willie Will, Rowe, from, Will, Will Shields, and, Will Shields and, and, yeah. and, and Brian Waters and, and Run Hard. That group was pretty salty. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think they they've had that kind of talent at the position since then. So uh, again, it's it's uh, uh, it'll be exciting. And you know, bottom line is it's, it's hard to win in the NFL. I mean, I don't care how good you are. Um, so they're going to have to have some luck and have all the stuff happen right. But 
um, I think they, they've got as good a shot as anybody to, to get back to the, to the dance. And they drafted Creed Humphrey. I really like that one. You know, the center from I've Oklahoma. I've been hearing a lot of good things about him, and and I, I understand he's he's running first team reps right now. Yeah, so, I, I I understand why. Yeah, yeah. With before, so I want to say there was a center that was ranked. Oh, Landon Dickerson. That was the other center. But last year, if he would have came out last year, he would have been the first center drafted. Creed Humphrey. Because uh, oh, really? remember, well, I think it was the, was it the Baker Mayfield year. Or no, it was no, a Kyle, it was, no, it was Kyler Murray year. Yeah, there you go. Where they had all four of their start, their linemen drafted, and he just stayed another year. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that uh, like I said, I that, I think there's uh, it's going to be fun to, to to watch them on offense, and and of course you know defensively they're going to have to get it done, and and uh, um, you know they they drafted uh, Willie Gay last year. And uh, he's playing well, from what I understand. And, and uh, the kid from Missouri, uh, Bolton. That they Bolton, Nick Bolton. I'm, I'm hearing good things about him. So, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's 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 always a crapshoot. And, and but I tell you what, I, I've been a Chiefs fan my entire life, and so there were some, there were a lot of years where when you start talking about how you know, good teams are going to be. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had to go sit down somewhere. Oh, yeah. So at least now I can have a conversation. I can at least get the conversation about it. That's yeah. that is pretty. That's pretty fun. Oh yeah. Uh, my my grandpa, he was he's talking about going to uh, going to a game. Me taking him to a game. He he he'd have a rough time going to a game. <laughs> But uh, he was so it was it was just funny to listen uh, to listen him talk so like casually about going to a game like oh yeah like we'll go go to a game I was like um, are we sitting in those beats he's no we're gonna sit on a lower level I looked down I said uh, how much do you think those tickets are and I I don't remember his answer I said like, they're gonna be two fifty minimum minimum. He was like, no, I guarantee you I can get some for 150 or less. And I just kind of looked at him. I was like, okay. So I, you know, I let him do whatever. I had to been a week later. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> I went and looked up to see how much the tickets were. I don't know what week it is. And they play the Giants this year. Lower level is 450. I, was, I remember when you could go on the lower level for 50. <laughs> Like that's maybe not yeah no probably yeah. about 50, oh, 50 yeah. 70 yeah. I cause that's that's when I really remember uh, my first ever Chiefs Chargers game uh, I went with one of my friends in middle school yeah I want to say middle sixth grade went to a Chiefs Chargers game and we sat like right by the tunnel yeah. so like I I'm high five in Chargers because you know they're. <laughs> Uh, they're Hispanic, so it, you know this. That's almost always either Raiders or Chargers. Yeah, they're Chargers fans, and we went. I'm uh, like that was that was like the really good Chargers team. Uh, you know, had like LT, uh, Antonio Camardi, yeah. like that that team that really should have won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Uh, Marlon, uh, Marlon McCree. Yeah, you know um, the infamous Marlon McCree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, like I said, it's, yeah, fifty dollars for a ticket was. I mean, and that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think my my uh, my oldest daughter was talking about you know, going to a game, and uh, you know, I'm I'm at the point now where I'm pretty cool just being at the house. That way, I can pace the floor and. And when I want to go to the bathroom, I got to wait in line. Yeah. I, if, I'm, if I'm thirsty, I have to pay eight bucks for you know a beer or whatever. And, and uh, so I, I like being on there. Every once in a while, we kind of make it a, an event. But uh, <clears throat> I mean, if if I want to take my family to a football game, I'm dropping a grand. Yeah. So I, I got to save up for that. And so, uh, I, it, so <laughs> it ain't happening very often. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm actually I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to make it to the Chiefs Chargers game in LA this year. Go see the new oh, stadium. Really? Yeah, that's that's the goal. Man, I, I, that thing is immaculate. Yeah, that it's, is, that is ridiculous. just looking at the pictures. Yeah, it looks it looks amazing. That's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know something like I said, I, I uh, 
I've, I've never been a, a, necessarily a Chargers hater. Um, you know, there's some, as a Kansas City Chiefs fan, there's some teams that, like the Raiders, that you just like, whatever. Um, but there have been times I've rooted for the, uh, for the Chargers. Yeah. Um, you know, with the, their, their time going to the Super Bowl, I definitely was rooting for them. Um, that was the 49ers, the 49ers. right? 49ers. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, there have been some players that I've really liked. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Jefferson, Charlie Joyner, uh, Kellen Winslow, and they had Dan Fouts. They, they were fun to watch. And, and again, so I would root for them, you know, in, until they played the Chiefs. But, you know, when, when they were in the playoffs, I was I was rooting for them to win. So, uh, you know, it's I, I've been to a few Chiefs Chargers games. Uh, I think that those, well, obviously, last year those games were a lot closer, and I think that they're going to continue to be closer because they've got some oh, yeah. talent. Um, that quarterback's got a big arm, has got a heck of a lot of talent. Uh, I, I think he, uh, Herbert, will, will ultimately, I think he'll eventually pass uh, the kid from Buffalo in terms of, you know, everyone's kind of thinking uh, he's the greatest yeah. thing ever. And, and he's a good yeah. quarterback, but I think eventually, uh, within the next year or so, he's going to leapfrog him in terms of that talk about becoming the face of the league or at least at least uh, getting out of Mahomes' shadow a little bit because I, I still think he's going to be the man for a while. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. Like, I... I would call any Chargers fan crazy as hell if they think that Justin Herbert is going to be Patrick Mahomes. Just uh, Patrick Mahomes' skill set is rare. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's really, it's, hasn't been seen. Aaron Rodgers is like. He's a generational talent. Yeah. He's a generational talent. And then, you know, something Rodgers was when, when, when he came up and he, you know, had to sort of. Get his, you know, make his bones under under Favre, and uh, there's there's there have been some guys that have come along uh, that have been generational type talent, like Tom Brady, and you know the list goes on, oh, yeah. um, and that's that's who Patrick Mahomes is. But you know, uh, Tom Brady didn't win the Super Bowl every year, yeah, and so there's going to be those years like that um, for the Chiefs, um, and in in those years, there's going to be guys like. Uh, Josh Allen and Justin Herbert that, that are going to lead their team to, to the promised land. So, yeah. I'm really excited about our, our new coach. I like from what I've read, they're saying he's like the defensive Sean McVay. So that's one thing I love to see because our well part of I mean you know this just from being a Chiefs fan is the primary reason why our teams haven't been great. Minus that year we went to the playoffs, mm-hmm. we get decimated by injuries by like week six. By weeks, by week six, we were down six, seven starters for the mm-hmm. year, and then other starters are missing three, four games here. To Derwin James, if he's healthy, he's probably he's he's a top five defender when he's healthy. And hell, I I would yeah. put him like. I might put him like two or three if like when he's healthy and he like if he plays the full season. I, he is defensive player of the year worthy. He, yeah, he, he's got yeah he's got those kinds of credentials and, uh, and he's scary. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But uh, like you said, he's got. I think in order for him to really be a serious part of that conversation, he's going to have to to get past the injuries and and, uh, and and again, it's not it's not a criticism. It's it's just. I think he's just one of those guys that's had some bad luck with that. Yeah. And, uh, so same thing with you know Keenan Allen. He, when yeah. he first came to the league, he was injured every year, yeah. and he's he finally got rid of that. Uh, so hopefully Derwin will do the same. Well, Keenan, I love Keenan Allen. <laughs> he scares me too. You know, he's one of those guys. That I just I just want him to have an off day. He's twice all, a year. Oh, he's always open. Yeah. yeah. I I remember the year he. The year he tore his ACL in the Chiefs game, week one. I was that was the game I was at, and I mean, now this was like this was Chiefs Marcus Peters, which I think is probably like the best Marcus Peters. Mm-hmm. He was tearing his ass up. I want to say he had six catches, eighty yards. Came out and tore his ACL in the second quarter, like halfway through the second quarter. Had six catches, eighty yards before that. I was yeah I was always having a day and he was on my fantasy team. Oh my god! Yeah, 
first game of the year. Yeah, he might have made, made some money for you in week one just in that that small time that he played. But yeah, yeah. but in the end, yeah, it's you know, injuries can be so devastating. And, and honestly, I don't like to see injuries happen to anybody. Yeah, um, you know, I don't I don't want to asterisk. You know, that I, I want to beat your best guys. Yeah, and. Uh, like I said, the, the Chiefs have had that that uh, that success, and, um, but there's been times where the Chargers have dominated. I think every every one of the teams in that division uh, have dominated, and I'm hearing a lot of talk that um, people are looking at the AFC West as being the strongest division in the league, and I think that there's some there's some validity to that. So. I I still think the NFC West right yeah. right now. Yeah. Because, because so the problem with and I've said this for the last couple I've said that for the last couple of years mm-hmm. but it's like you'll see the Raiders and the and the Chargers and the Broncos like they're you're, they're like eh, and then they then they die yeah, down at the end, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I I would really like to see like just everybody at the same time just kind of rise because it's been building for a, a few years where all three of the the other teams have been looking like they're gonna they're gonna get somewhere. Um, like last, I want to say last, yeah, it was last year. I had, like between me and my friends, I was like, my hot take for the year is three teams from the AFC West to make the playoffs. And obviously that did not happen. <laughs> uh, I, hell, I was mad. I was mad that we won out uh, after because we won like four straight at the yeah. end of the year. I was so pissed. We were sitting at like number four, draft pick oh, number draft. four. We ended up at damn thirteen. I was so mad. Well, you know, of course, the, that last week against the Chiefs, they sat everybody. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it's funny because sometimes you hear about you know players tanking, and, and I, I don't believe that. I, I don't think that that's something that that happens. Um, but you know, something if you sit your starters. Mm-hmm. And and I'm playing my first team guys against your twos and threes across the board. Yeah. Then yeah, you, you're, <clears throat> gonna, you're gonna have a chance to to win those games. And and you know something the Chargers did with that. You, you you're gonna play our uh, you're gonna play your your, your reserves against us. And we're gonna beat you. And then mm-hmm. that's what they did. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they did. They uh, they they kind of hurt themselves a little bit in terms of the draft uh, position. Oh, also, man, because uh, <laughs> I mean at the time. Because I the last few years I haven't really paid attention to college. So I was like, stay them for get Panay Sewell. Mm-hmm. It's you know, I'm happy with Rayshon Slater now. Now what I would like really would have loved we needed a tackle. If we'd have been a number four and got Kyle Pitts, oh, with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams yeah. and that would have been ridiculous. They, they, yeah, that that would have been that would have been one of those uh, situations where you go Yep. Yeah. Who we gonna cover? Yeah. yeah it honestly, it would have like different dynamic, but it would have been like the Chiefs. Like, well, can't double, can't double Tyreek, can't double Travis Kelsey, and then you got me Cole. That I mean, he's not the greatest receiver, but if you get burnt, bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really he's doing a lot better too. So I mean, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, hell, he, he better be. They. I. Uh, I like. Uh, Cornell Powell, I I, I love. Here and he's a playmaker. Oh yeah, I mean just he's he's a different dynamic for them. They really haven't had a, a route runner. I mean like Tyreek Hill has developed into a route yes. route runner, but they haven't had like a change of pace because he's not running a four two that is gonna get open like that. And and I honestly thought that that Pringle could develop into that, but. But uh, again, just what I've been seeing and, and, and hearing, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the, yeah, Powell's gonna be uh, oh, yeah. I, I still think Pringle's gonna make a heck of a contribution, but uh, I think they found something with, with Powell. So. Oh yeah. It was one of those, like during the draft, the Patriots every year have the same type of draft where it's like, when they make the pick, you're like, damn, that's, good. that's a great pick for them. <laughs> yeah, they uh, had a few of those. Now there's, I want to say it was this year and last year. There was a few, well, y'all have needed corners badly for some years, and y'all have just kept passing on them. I mean, y'all got Sneed, but um, yeah. but there's been Which others needed, where you like, but, but yeah, 
you know, Steve was kind of an unknown, mm-hmm. and then he proved that he was he was worthy of the pick. But yeah, you know, you go, well, why, why why are you pesting up these guys that are that are top four or five at their position and they have gotten all the accolades? And and you know, I, I guess that's one of the things you got to give. Uh, really, all the teams that that do a good job on on draft day is is doing their homework, because um, and I, I think you got to give it up for Beach because he, you know, he's he's found some guys, and so you go well. At this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust him. I, yeah. I have no idea who this kid oh, yeah, is. For sure, I'm gonna go ahead and trust him because uh, he's 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 you know made it known that he's he's got the eye. So. Uh, yeah, that's another one of those situations where I don't, I don't pretend to know more than those guys that are doing it. But man, I tell you, there have been some times where I'm like, I, yeah, yeah that, I can't figure that one out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Oh yeah, yeah, I've, I've had that same thing for the Chargers. Honestly, this year, uh, speaking of my later receivers, <clears throat> we drafted a receiver in the third round this year after drafting two last year, and I hadn't. Either I hadn't heard of him or I had like read a little bit on him, but not that much because I'm like, we're not taking a receiver. Um, but he, so he went to Tennessee, never had over 500 yards. And, but like during draft co- coverage, they're like, yeah, he's going to be a great pro. Kind of in that Cornell Powell, like, uh, like nice and built, <clears throat> precise route runner. He can, like, he can out muscle you too. And that he's been putting on a show at yeah. camp. And then one of our other receivers that's been on the roster for two years, they're saying he's showing out too. Yeah. So, yeah, we ain't gonna lack weapons. It's yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be exciting. <clears throat> you know, uh, there, there aren't gonna be any breaks. And usually there aren't in your division. And there aren't gonna be any breaks. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you know some of those those off schedule games, the NFC. I think we're playing the NFC East. Yeah. And so I'm hoping I, I think the whole division plays NFC, so I just hope we can beat up on them. Um hell, I don't honestly mm, I'm I'm skeptical on the Cowboys. Uh, I think the football team is gonna surprise some people. Uh, I'm skeptical on the Cowboys, Giants and the Eagles. I ain't worried about that. Uh, I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who cause we play who is the other division we play? Um, it's an AFC division. The only AFC division we play is NFC East, and then uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, is it AFC South? I think it is the AFC South. AFC South. It is. Let's see. Nope. AFC. Wait, hold on. Why is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it could be AFC North. North. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah, Ravens. Yeah. Then they have an additional NFC game with the Packers, but that's because they added a 17th game to this to the regular season schedule. Yeah. So. Yeah. Our our additional game is okay. No, two additional. Okay. Yeah. So we play the Patriots and we play the Texans. Those are our two. Or two out the, of the, the, out of the uh, out of the, the pattern, the, I guess. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, at least one of those is win. <laughs> I'm I'm interested to see what the Patriots do. So am I. Um, you know, uh, you know, the whole time it's been system this and system that, and, and I, I don't know that that's not true, um, but. Uh, I, 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 you know, you, you, you can't count out Tom Brady, and I think as a coach you can't count out Bill Belichick. I just, I just don't think it's wise to, and I don't think any other coach is doing that. But uh, uh, yeah, like you said, I think it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back. Yeah, because they will bounce back. Yeah, just I, how I, how I, they do it is exactly. the question. I, I have no doubt that, that they're going to do something. Now the question is, what is that the exact thing they're going to do? Yeah. So. All right, so uh, to wrap up each <clears throat> thing, like, like I told you, uh, I asked ask a question um, t- for somebody that's looking to be in your shoes uh, eventually or just, you know, like some general life advice that, that you would like to give and you follow. Uh, what, do you, what do you got for the people? 
you know, be a, be a sponge. If if uh, you know, I think in in, in any any endeavor, um, seek to learn as much as you can about the the craft, about what you're doing, um, and and just try to absorb as much information as you can. Uh, and then probably the second thing is um, you know, there's a saying that uh, you know make it the big time where you are. And so, uh, and I read this in a book that, that Bill Walsh uh, wrote years ago. Um, you know, if you're a coach who's worried about, you know, your, your title and the audience that you have um, and, and the, the accolades that you get, you'll hit a brick wall. Um, so, uh, you know, don't, don't worry about the, the next job. Uh, the, you know, those next jobs will come but be the best learner uh, that you can be and absorb as much information and don't be afraid to, to grind. You just gotta grind and, and, and uh, you know, hey coach, what can I do to make myself better? Um, do the extra stuff, watch extra film. Uh, you know, just, just put yourself in a position to be noticed by others. Well, you heard it here. Oh, thanks you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, This has been another episode of the Culture Podcast, and we'll see you guys next time.